Some call it the ultimate sport. For me, it's more like organized brain damage, but whatever your view on boxing is, there is something pure and animalistic about the physical contest. And there've been some incredible matchups over the years. Think Hagler versus Hearns, think Ali versus Foreman. But when it comes to street fighting, the undisputed champion has always been BMW's M3. So the big question really is, can the Mercedes AMG C63 finally deliver that knockout punch? So I guess keeping with the whole boxing analogy, round one is always kind of sizing your opponent up. It's your sparring session. And that's what the skid pan work is about, getting familiar with what the C63 is capable of. Of course, it's an ultimate performance machine. What we're trying to do here is figure out the different stage of traction support, because you've got full traction on, you've got sport mode, and then the great thing with the AMG, it's a performance car. You are able to turn everything off. So on the skid pan, we're getting to play and, uh, <laughs> and size up the opponent. moment I've got everything on, ESP is set into how you should be driving this every day on the road and it's amazing, it's just flipping turns in, obviously going to be pushing understeer from a safety point of view, if I get too clever it should come in and help me. This is what's going to make you look like you know what you're doing but the joy with anything AMG is that you can turn everything off. Okay so now what we're going to do is put it into Sport Plus, so essentially I've got 75% of the power so it lets me have a little bit more fun as you can feel there. Oh, it's still amazing, I mean, because you think you know what you're doing, and as you're about to make your name Totti, it just says to you, hello, I'm still here to help you. Very impressive. Now, this is kind of where AMG is a performance brand, and they allow you to turn everything off. And this is critical, because this is what a performance guy wants. He wants to be able to drive his car at the ultimate. Wow, adrenaline. Round one. I think Merck's taken it. I even feel like one of the support boxer crew with my cap on anyway. Back to it. Round two is really about softening up your opponent. And that, I think, is the biggest challenge for Mercedes AMG engineers, was making the C63 a car that was super compliant, something you could live with every day, but obviously we know the performance is going to be there. That, for me, is the ultimate test. Let's see if they can win round two. <laughs> so, fairly simple answer. Yes, they've really, really done a great job. And we've got it set in comfort mode now, and they really have broadened that, where comfort before kind of was efficiencies. It really is a comfort setting. The dampeners are absorbing all the bumps on our rather dodgy roads. The MCT box, it's just silky smooth. You don't even notice that there's a gear change. Even the engine note, surprisingly muted. The ultimate sleeper, very, very impressive. But obviously when you want to dial in the performance that you know is there in the AMG, it's a simple flick of the switch. And you now go through Comfort, Sport, Sport Plus, and if you're on the S, it's got race mode as well. And obviously there's an individual setting where you can personalize the options. But I like their smart buttons. That 18,000 Rand for the AMG exhaust, buy it. Because push the button, even if you are driving in Comfort mode, you've got that raspy engine note, which is awesome. Push the button I can choose to put into manual mode or allow it to run in, in auto, no problem. I can also personalize and change the dampener control of, of the suspension rates as well. So they really have thought about everything, and this for me was the critical part with the C63 AMG. Was it going to be a car that I could drive to work with and live with every day? Yes. Well, obviously round three is the one that counts, the knockout punch. It's all about performance. 6.2 liter V8 is no more. 
They've gone to a four litre twin turbo V8. It sounds a flippant part, but can it deliver that punch? Obviously being an AMG, it's all about performance and uh, delivering a knockout punch. The big talk obviously, brand new power plant, and it's uh, the future of AMG, I guess. When uh, the GT Coupe comes out later, it's gonna be running that same four liter twin turbo power plant. So whether you're choosing to go with the standard or the S, there is a lot of grunt available. 350, 650 in the standard, and obviously you're pushing all the way up to uh, 375 and 700 in the S derivative. They've done a lot of work in widening the performance gap in terms of how this car actually drives day to day. So in comfort mode, it's important that it's way more comfortable, but in performance mode, it needs to be way more dynamic as well. So they've done a lot of work on that. Critical engine note. I mean, that is where Merck has always been the pioneer. They've kind of given and socked it to their opposition. And the big worry was, is this car gonna sound as good now that it's obviously not running a big 6.2 liter V8? I can tell you, yes. It sounds flippin' amazing. And the critical thing is, this isn't fake sound. This has all been done through the engine. No piping of sound through the speakers, no mucking around. This is the real deal. They've also gone and put in the dynamic adaptive engine mounts. So in slow driving conditions, the car is going to be way more compliant to that type of drive. And the minute you start driving more performance oriented, it's going to firm that up. That gives you that wider tolerance between performance and between driving this car on this daisy every single day to work. And uh, compared to the old model, this is running on a wider track in the front and the rear. So the car really does have a lot more room to sit and squat down and get itself into the perfect position. And it's very, very drivable. I mean, the cabin is, is really rear positioned. The nose is actually seven centimeters longer to fit uh, that V8 turbo power plant into it. So from a presence perspective, it's got it. And from a driving perspective, I must admit, the work that they've done on the suspension and the setup has really made it quite a dynamic car. Turn in is good. Uh, not as much body roll. Where it used to be a highway brawler, hmm, this is going to be an interesting knockout round between this and the BMW. So I guess like with Mayweather and Pacquiao, each fighter has his own fan base and each fighter has his own unique style. For the AMG sub-brand, the C63 is, is vital, it's their volume seller. I think for a lot of consumers, you associate the AMG brand with the C63. What I can tell you, that soundtrack that it was always such a distinctive part of this car, they somehow have managed to retain it, even though it's running that 4-litre twin-turbo power plant. Vital. The drive, that was probably its biggest downfall before, was the everyday drive. Yes, the performance was there, it was a highway brawler, it was a real street fighter, but the everyday drive is much improved. Comfort mode now really is a comfort mode. And in terms of price, it's just over a million rand for the entry level C63 and 1.163 for the S. It's actually very competitively priced against its main competitor, the BMW. Gloves off, this street fighter has got real.